The Lord's Prayer we sing every Sunday. What does it mean? How does it affect us? We don't give those ideas any thought. We sing it as part of our ritual. We find the Lord's Prayer in uh, the Sermon on the Mount in the Gospel of Matthew. And the Sermon on the Mount is uh, Jesus' inaugural address. He's telling about what he's about and what his agenda is. Uh, we don't think of Jesus as having an agenda, but he did. Uh, the kingdom of heaven was his agenda. Uh, the Sermon on the Mount comes pretty early in his ministry. Uh, he was um, well trained and uh, well informed of the Juda Judaic law and its rituals. And in order for him to enter his ministry, he went through some of the rituals. And the first one was to be baptized. And uh, he was baptized by John the Baptist. And we often think of uh, baptism as a Christian ritual, which it is, but it has its roots in the Judaic tradition. And in order to come before God, you had to be cleansed ritually. And you had to be immersed in living water. And living water is a lake, a river, a stream, fresh water. And when he walked out, or lifted up, out of the, the river, or maybe it was the Sea of Galilee, uh, the dove descended on him, the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove, descended on him and said, this is my son in whom I am very well pleased. And then, this really is interesting, because then the Spirit leads Jesus to be tempted. That sounds really strange. And what's the purpose? So he goes into the wilderness, he's led into the wilderness, and he's supposed to be there for 40 days. But 40 doesn't necessarily mean 40 days. It's the length of time it takes to complete a process. So he's in the wilderness, and he's gone through this fasting period, and he's coming to the end, and he's hungry. So the adversary comes and says, you know, you're a master. Why don't you turn these stones into bread? And he says, I'm not going to do that. So then the adver adversary says, uh, takes Jesus up to the top of the temple and tells him to throw himself off the temple and let the angels bear him up so that they will see who he is and bow down to him. Jesus said, I'm not doing that. So then the adversary takes Jesus to the top of a mountain. And he shows Jesus all the kingdoms of the world. And he says to Jesus, if you will follow me, I will give you all of this. And Jesus says, I'm not doing that. So then the angels come and minister him to him. And this is when he starts his ministry. He's ready. He uh, goes around Galilee preaching and teaching, and they're bringing people to be healed by him, physical, mental, whatever. And he's healing these, and the crowds are growing and growing and growing. And finally, he has this huge crowd, and there's barely enough room uh, for them where he is. So he finds a quiet place on a hill. And the people follow him, and that is when he delivers the Sermon on the Mount, his inaugural address. Uh, as I said, the Lord's Prayer is part of the Sermon on the Mount. It's the only prayer Jesus ever gave us. And he gives us some do's and don'ts about prayer. He says, uh, don't, don't uh, stand in front of the uh, synagogue and pray. Don't show your prayer off. Don't stand on the corner and pray. You have already received your blessing, if that's what you're going to do. 
And then he says, do not be like the Gentiles. They think God's going to hear them for their many words. But go into your closet or your room or a quiet place in your mind where you're not going to be disturbed and pray in secret. And your Father, God, will uh, bless you openly. And when you pray, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we have forgiven those who have trespassed against us. And leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Our Father, those first two words that he utters changes the whole image of God and our belief in God. He uh, be decides God is Father. And when I was on my lib, uh, women's lib trip, I used to get upset because there was no mother involved. But that was a patriarchal society. The father was the head of the family. The father made the decisions. The, pot, par, the father loved his family. He provided for his family and he protected his family. So we have this image of this provider, protector, this loving God, which is different than the God of the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, nobody had relationship with God. God only spoke to certain people and they brought the message. And he wasn't all that kind and compassionate either. And so Jesus brings this new concept of God that blesses us. Our Father, our provider, our protector. Our, our Father. Jesus doesn't say your Father, his Father, my Father. He says our Father, our Father. That means that we are all brothers and sisters because God is our Father. And because God is our Father, we are then brought into a relationship with God. We don't have to go to somebody else to talk to God. We can have this direct connection to God. And it also refers back to uh, Genesis where God said, let us make humans in our image and after our likeness and God created them male and female. So that refers back to that. Our Father, who art in heaven. Do you know what heaven is? Most of us don't. I'll tell you where it's not, it's not up in the sky. But Jesus never defines heaven. He says what it's like. It's like a seed planted and you sleep night and day and night and day and the seed sprouts, and then it begins to leaf out, and then it has the ear, and then it has the corn in the ear, and right away you harvest it. So you harvest your good, but you have to do some work first. And we don't know how, one of the things that we do is that we're always trying to make the invisible visible and there are spiritual things that are mysteries and we do not understand them and we may understand them when we make our transition but we will not understand that's in a negative statement that's the truth they will not understand them at this level although Jesus did uh, and he also describes the kingdom of heaven as uh, something of value the man finds a treasure in the, in the field and sells everything he has to have it. And he describe it, describes it as something growing and expanding. In unity, we believe uh, that the kingdom of heaven is right here, right now, and it's, a, it's another dimension, a spiritual dimension. 
and it, it uh, is uh, interpenetrating this dimension, the physical dimension. And we can see that kingdom of heaven, that heaven, when we turn to God in prayer, when we put God first in our life. But we have to turn. And, we, and then we see this thing that happens and we think, oh, and we try to put it in the, in the visible again. So heaven is a realm that's everywhere present and filled with divine ideas. Do you know what a divine idea is? It's a, 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 a love is a divine idea. Compassion is a divine idea. Joy is a divine idea. All of those, intelligence and wisdom, all of those are divine ideas. And when we accept them, they grow and expand in us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed comes from a root, a root word that means whole. Whole, healthy, and holy. And the word name in the Bible means nature. So what is the nature of God? God is wholeness. There's nothing missing. God is wholeness. And God is all love and all compassion and all joy. God is whole. And so are you. Why are you whole? Because God is your Father. And now we look at ourselves and said, well, you know, I got this ache and I've got this pain. What can you, you know, why do you say I'm whole? You are whole at the spiritual level. And our task is to bring that wholeness into our physical world. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Did you know we all have a kingdom? We uh, get pretty lazy with it and don't pay much attention to it, but we all have a kingdom. It's our consciousness. And uh, a lot of times we associate our consciousness uh, with the brain. Uh, consciousness is also called the mind. And for me, the, the mind, the consciousness, uses the brain uh, for storage and that kind of thing. Um, so we have this consciousness, and in this consciousness, we can do anything in that consciousness we want. But as I said, we're lazy, and our thoughts and feelings just run all over the place. So thy kingdom come, what is that? The kingdom of God is when we put God first in our lives, in our consciousness. We take time to pray. I have a running conversation with God. That's, I, I also pray, pray and meditate, but I have this ongoing conversation. Now, God is not always first in my mind because I'm not perfect yet. I'm whole, but I'm not perfect yet. And that's where all of us are. That's where all of us are. And we can look at our bodies and say, I have this ache and the pain, but it's not really true of me because my spirit self is holy and it's in me and I want it to work now. So we live in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, when we allow and invite God into our consciousness to lead us and guide us and to provide for us and protect us. Thy will be done. Will uh, uh, also has the uh, meaning of intention. So what is God's intention for us? God's intention for us is every good thing. Uh, God's intention for us is enoughness. God's intention for us is a rich, filled life. Thy will be done. And here's the kicker. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of heaven does not come to us. It comes through us when we let, invite God to become, a, become quickened in our lives, to become active in our lives, to go into our closet and commune with God. So our Father, our Father, our, our protector, provider, who is in this realm, is that spiritual dimension that is everywhere present. Hallowed be thy name, God is whole, and so are we. Thy kingdom come. Be in me, God. Express through me, God. Let me be your channel, God. In unity, we used to say we're in the express business. We're in the express business to express our spiritual nature in our everyday living to bring the kingdom of heaven on earth. Thy will be done. Let your goodness flow into my life. Let it manifest. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven in my life right now. And that's the truth.
Hi. Thank you for joining us today. What a wonderful message we've had from Reverend Vi. And as always, Jody's beautiful, wonderful music. I'm standing out here in the sunlight, enjoying this beautiful day, and really thinking about Reverend Vi's words and the music, the lessons that we've learned. Before we end today, I'd like to invite you to join me, and let's just take some of these concepts deeper within ourselves, shall we? Please, settle back, make yourself comfortable, take a couple deep breaths. Maybe you can be out in the sun like I am. It feels wonderful. And just become aware of our being. Breathing in and letting that air move through us, to us, and all around us, here and now, in this moment. We can let go of any fears, any tension or anxiety. Let it fall away. We don't need it here. Just breathe. Just be. And as you allow your consciousness to expand, consider that we all share that same Creator, our Father, our Mother, God. In that sharing, we are family, all of us in this together, right here, right now, breathing easily, breathing gently. Into this awareness, I invite you to affirm you create with your thoughts. The power of your mind is extraordinary. In that knowing, Let's think of love. Let's consider beauty. As we bring this into our awareness, let's consider laughter and joy, abundance, prosperity, all of the things that we would call to us and through us as easily as this breath. As easily as the bird song, the breeze, the sunlight, our thoughts create. Our thoughts empower. Our thoughts bring to us the reality that we live in. And we can make it even better, even brighter, as we consciously draw away from the things that frighten us, that repel us, that disgust us, as we move towards the things that empower us, that strengthen us, that lighten us, let that light be your light. Let it stand for all that you are. Breathing in, and breathing out, breathing in, and breathing out. Never forget how powerful you are. Breathing in, and breathing out. When you are ready, I invite you to return your attention to here and now, to return your focus to what we are doing together as we recognize our ability to create. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please like our video and subscribe if you liked it. It helps us so very much if you do that. And leave us a comment. Let us know 
what you are creating, what you are affirming in your life right now. God bless you, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us, and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook, search for Unity Church of El Cajon, and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos, and leave comments, which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters, which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.